Mark, thank you very much for coming on. Um, My pleasure. I mean, as we've been pointing out, and you know far better than I, that the visuals circle around the globe before Israel can appropriately do the proper due diligence to find out what has happened here. And those erroneous reports did actually scuttle of an important summit in Jordan when President Biden was on, way, on his way. So we're trying to not draw any conclusions. But there is a bottom line issue here, because Israel has said that the fact that you claim there is command and control under the al-Shifa hospital, not con a fact not confirmed by the U.S., justifies hitting close to. But give me your bottom lines here, because a lot of U.S. officials and international officials say you know, it, it's a war crime for Hamas to use a hospital to shield a command and control center. But they say that do, that does not justify striking a hospital when you know that there are civilians there, refugees there, displaced people and patients. So, Andrea, you raise a lot of questions, and they're difficult questions. And, of course, Israel doesn't want, does not want to see innocent civilians caught up in the crossfire between our forces and the Hamas terrorists. Uh, but let's look clear here. You talked about international law. Uh, the, the additional protocol of the Geneva Convention, which is, uh, you know, seen by, by many as the, as the benchmark for these matters, it says specifically that you have to protect humanitarian sites like uh, 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 like hospitals. But Article 13 the, uh, of that same protocol says that if a, a combatant uses uh, those sites for its military machine, uh, then immunity is no longer there. And we have the right under international law uh, to strike out. And if Hamas uh, uses hospitals as it does to shield its military infrastructure, they have lost their immunity now. And in doing so, Hamas has committed the war crime by putting its military infrastructure underneath the hospital. Now, this doesn't mean that Israel shoots from the hip and, and has no concern on the contrary. We still make a maximum effort to differentiate, differentiate between the Hamas terrorists who are our target and innocent civilians who we don't want to see caught, caught up in crossfire. It makes our job more difficult. We're trying to be as surgical as we can, but we don't attack hospitals wholesale. Let's be clear about that. We're dealing with a difficult military situation and trying to be as surgical as is possible under the conditions. Are you trying to use smaller munitions and are you trying to use smart bombs rather than dumb bombs? It's one of the criticisms that I've heard from U.S. officials. One of the first things that has to be said is we've sent our ground forces in. I mean, Israel, if we wanted to, we could destroy all these forces, uh, all these structures from the air, and we're not doing that. We're being as surgical and as careful as we can be. Uh, and uh, having our boots on the ground, our soldiers on the ground, we're risking their lives. But I, I want to address the pictures with your permission, because the pictures are terrible. How can one look at these pictures and not be moved? But one also has to remember that these pictures are pictures Hamas wants you to see. I mean, this conflict has been going on for a month now. I have not seen a single picture. Correct me if, if you have, but I have not seen a single picture of a dead or injured Hamas fighter. We only see civilians. And this is because Hamas controls the Gaza Strip through coercion, through a dictatorship. And they uh, have the ability to control both the verbal messages coming out of Gaza and uh, the, the visual messages coming out. And it's not by accident. Uh, uh, have you seen any pictures of well, uh, Hamas's military activity by hospitals? No, they don't, they don't take pictures like that. You can't see them. There are reports, especially from the West Bank, of Israeli of IDF soldiers um, taking videos as the Hamas terrorists did during the October 7th massacre, you know, disgusting uh, GoPro videos, horrifying videos of their victims. But that Palestinian, I mean, they're Israeli soldiers, some, have done that as well now, with the way they've treated prisoners. So, so it, I, I'm not aware what you're talking about. I apologize. I, I probably should be. Okay. But of course, that would be against regulations, and any such soldiers involved in such a matter would be disciplined. I don't think there's a comparison with Hamas, where they were I'm committing the I'm most atrocious. I'm not okay. trying to compare them. I, I, but I, you know, there's no moral equivalency here. And we know who started this war, uh, Hamas on October 7th. Uh, let me ask you about the pause, because 
the U.S. the president very, you know, very obviously signaled they want the U.S. wants a longer pause, longer, more predictable pauses. I know for a fact. I've been reporting on this. Um, I, I have information from the last couple of weeks of patients trying to get out of the pediatric cancer hospital, Rantisi Hospital. They were on the list to get out on Thursday. And then there was a hit. I don't know which side. No one can confirm which side. Around that hospital, and they couldn't make their meeting point. They could not get south. Uh, their parents are understandably frightened. They don't think there's a reliable way out. Now there's going to be longer pauses. But can you do something with longer pauses still than the four hours with better notice? There's, people don't have communications. They don't have cell phones. They don't have internet. They don't have fuel. So, if, you know, so can you I, do something I, to get more people out safely? So as your own reporter on the ground correctly said uh, on Thursday, yesterday, 80,000 people used Israel's uh, humanitarian corridor uh, to, to, to flee the north and, and move to safer ground in the south. And I think that's one example that these things can work. Now, we're in a difficult combat situation. But I think in the framework of that situation, we are making a maximum effort. And, and of course, the Americans are speaking to us about this, and we take what they say very seriously. But the idea of establishing humanitarian corridors, uh, safe zones in particular areas and particular times, so as to allow assistance to come in, aid to come in, and allow people to get out, uh, that, that's the Israeli policy. Ultimately, it's in our interest. First of all, from a moral point of view, we don't want to hurt innocent civilians, but also from a tactical point of view, it's easier for us to deal with Hamas if civilians have left the area. But frankly, that also makes it a challenge because Hamas understands that it wants those civilians to shield its military machine, and they make it difficult sometimes at gunpoint for people to leave. Like the 80,000 people who left uh, yesterday, why did they wait to the end? They could have left uh, uh, three weeks ago when, when we first urged people to leave. They, uh, is it possible that Hamas... Is it possible? There were still there were still strikes going on in the south. There were no no proper safe zones. We've seen it with our own teams there. But let me ask you about the hostages because there have been high level talks between uh, the head of Mossad, our CIA director in Qatar, now in Cairo. Is there any hope of getting hostages out with these longer pauses? We would argue the opposite. The, the hope of getting our hostages out uh, and uh, holding uh, uh, 139, uh, sorry, 239, uh, uh, including 32 children, uh, babies, infants. But uh, uh, we think the way to get our people out is through pressure. Uh, beef up the pressure on Hamas, beef up the pressure on Hamas's friends in the Gulf, make them understand that Israel will keep hitting them hard. And we've said, you want a ceasefire? We're, uh, we're open to this, you know, for that sort of thing on the condition that our hostages are released. And, and let's be clear, from our point of view, this is the number one humanitarian issue. There, we can do pauses, we can do humanitarian pauses, but you want to ceasefire? It's not going to happen without the release of hostages.